What's going on my O2 family? Mike here, we're back with another video. On this video here, it's actually requested by a high school welding instructor. It's gonna be a 1G half inch plate, 6010 root, 718 fill and cap. Now let's get to it. All right guys, so I have my half inch plates here. So what I'm gonna do to prep up these plates, I'm gonna grind. The top part is right here above the bevel for whenever I'm capping it, I have a good surface and I take all this little mill scale off. I'm going to grind the bevel itself, clean it up, take anything off of it. I'm going to turn it around on the back side where our root's going to go. I'm going to take off all this mill scale, all the coating of the plate itself. I'm going to take it off and remove it. Then I'm going to grab the plate like this. I'm going to take my grinder with my grinder wheel. I'm going to hold it as flat as I can across this knife edge and I'm going to place a landing. Now the reason why I'm placing a landing on there is because when I'm doing that 6010 open root, I don't want it just to blow out, cause it too big of a keyhole, and not to actually stick to the metal. That landing's there to hold that metal into place, to, to apply the root, to keep it there. So again, I'm going to just take it across and apply my landing. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my plate and we're gonna apply that landing, which is gonna be a 330 second landing. So what you can do is you can take a 330 second rod uh, I did that I'm gonna use for my spacer as well, but break the flux off and then we can measure our landing from there. So once we've made the landing, what we're gonna do is we're gonna place the rod on there, make sure that it's 332nd all the way down, and then we have a good landing for it. Now we're just prep up the other one. All right guys, so we already have our both of our plates prepped up. Like I said, I'm gonna take a 332nd, 7018, break the flux off of it. That's going to be our gap, so we're going to go ahead and place this in the center of the plates like this. Make sure it's nice and even, make sure we don't have no high-low or anything like that. Now we're ready to tack. We are going to use a 6010 1 8 to tack it, and we're about at uh, 70 amps on our machine. I'm going to go ahead and hold the plates like this so they won't move. I'm going to tack the edges up. Nice little tack. We're going to go ahead and remove our spacer so it won't get stuck in there. Make sure our plates are still gapped evenly. If not, you can press it against the wall a little bit. Get your, get your gap even. And now we're going to tack the other side up. So we are going to tack it in 1G, which is the flat position. So we're going to take the plates. We're going to put it right here on the edge in 1G one, one position. So now that we have it in one position, 1G position, I'm gonna take my 6010 1/8, and whenever I'm doing my root pass, I'm gonna do a stitching motion, which is basically back and forth whip or stitch it. I'm gonna start right here, I'm gonna warm up where my tack is at. I'm gonna come right here. I'm gonna just go in and out of my puddle. Watch my puddle follow me as I'm going down this route. Watching the keyhole keep moving in front of me while I'm watching the puddle follow my rod at the back, okay? Remember, always watch your puddle, never the rod. Back and forth, all the way through the end of the plate. Now I am gonna dress up the tacks. I am gonna grind them down 
kind of feather them so I can tie into them. So I got my tacks grinded and cleaned up. Now let's get with the root pass. Okay, we're gonna go back and forth nice and tight. You see you hear that coarse noise all the way down. So you know you're penetrating. pop off all right so i'm gonna grind the leading edge of my uh weld right here so we can tie back in so so we feathered down the leading edge of our uh weld so we can tie back in to finish our root pass all right so now we're going to warm it up while we grind it Warm up our rod, fill it all up where we grind it, give it a little push. Make sure we're going in and out of the puddle. Stitching it together, you hear that porch sound in the back, that's how we know we're getting that penetration. All the way to the tack. Alright guys, so now I'm going to take my uh, grinder wheel and we're going to clean up the root pad. Now we're not going to grind too deep inside of it, we just want to kind of clean it up a little bit for our 7018 because we are running at 7018 1 at about 125 amps for our hot pass. Alright guys, so we're going to fill it up with 7018 1 for our hot pass. I'm at 125 amps and the motion I'm going to be using is like a little side to side, watching my puddle touch both walls. I'm not trying to spend too much time in the center. I'm focusing most of my heat on the walls just because I don't want to blow through that root. Plus, you want to melt those walls together to add reinforcement for that root. Alright guys, so I went ahead and cleaned the slag off of the of my weld right here so I can perform a tie-in so I can show you how I tie in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start about a half inch in front of the leading edge of that uh, weld I just did, which I'm going I'm to come back and I'm going to follow the edge of it around and continue my motion side to side again. Performing a tie-in is just basically filling up that edge and connecting the weld together so it can look like one, so it can be strong a strong tie-in. 
So you just want to follow that edge, come around, and perform the motion you were doing all the way through. At the end, it's going to get a little poppy sometimes with that one inch bar when it gets hot. All the way off. Alright, so we already got our root and hot end. Now I'm going to just start filling it up. My first fill, I did crank it up to about 135 amps. And I'm going to still use the side to side motion. I'm going to do one more big pass before I start uh, running stringer beads, which are stacking passes 50 50 and lining them up next to each other. Alright guys, so that was our first fill, now we're going to go to our second fill. I'm going to do one more wide bead before I start stacking them up. And on this one, I'm going to take my little bit of time just to make sure it builds up real nice so we can get to the flush. I'm still at 135 amps. Alright, so we went ahead and did two, uh, two fields already, now we're going to do our flush. Uh, still at 135 amps with the 7018 now I'm going to split this bead that I just did right here in half. So I'm going to run the first one on the left and the other one on the right, alright? I'm watching the puddle build to the edge of the puddle before I continue moving forward. Doing like a little uh, circle motion or side to side motion. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and do the last pass of the flush to go ahead and flush it out. Watching the puddle build to the edge of the bevel at 135 amps, 18.
All right, guys. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna grind a guideline for me for my cap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the grinder wheel on the grinder. I'm gonna put that grinder wheel. We'll place it right here on the edge of my weld and the bevel where it ended. And I'm gonna just go down and grind me a nice line. Nothing too deep, just enough where I can follow, okay? That's gonna help you keep your cap straighter and uh, so you can cap better, all right? Now, uh, whenever you get more comfortable where you don't have to need a grind line, by all means, go ahead and go ahead and stop using it. But uh, in this case, uh, we're gonna put a grind line on there to help us cap straighter, all right? So guys, as you see, we went ahead and grinded the line. I just weld. Now whenever I place my rod in there, I'm gonna place my rod about right here and we'll watch my puddle fill in this guideline and watch my puddle go to the edge so it can stay straighter, alright? So let's go ahead and cap it. Alright guys, so we'll go ahead and place our cap on the plate. I'm still using the 7018 1 rod, but I did turn my amps down 10 amps from 135 to 125 just because we did let the plate cool for a little bit. And I recommend letting them play cool for about 10-15 minutes. You don't want no undercut on your cap so it can be past visual and so you can have a good secure weld. So we go ahead and let it head cool down. We're going to crank down our amps about 10 amps. Now we're going to cap it. And all I'm doing is dragging it across. So we went and headed through our first bead of the cap already. Now I went and headed and grinded another guideline just so I know where I'm placing my rod at so I can go half of this bead and half over here because remember you got to stack your beads 50-50 in order for them to be correct and also so they can hold at the correct strength they need to be held at. Because if you do 70, uh, 30 or 60-40, uh, it's there's not equally balanced. You got to do 50-50 whenever you're coming down the bead. So we're going to put the other bead of our cap on here. This is the second bead of the cap. But watch it roll over 50-50 of the first bead, alright? Alright, so we went ahead through our first and second bead. We overlapped it 50-50. I did my last grind line here. Now we're gonna place the third bead of the cap. I'm gonna follow this line. We'll watch it overlap 50-50 of this bead. But also, since we're doing the last bead of our cap, we're gonna watch it when it melts on this plate right here. Just because we don't want to get no undercut on it. So we want a nice clean bead for the last one. Overlap, no undercut, following our guide guideline that we made for ourselves. Now let's cap it. So we're gonna do the last and final bead on our uh, 1G plate is going to be a three bead cap we're on the third one
All right, guys, there you have it. 1G position with 6010 root, 7018 fill and cap. I hope that helped you out. I hope that helps you out in your high school. And um, give us a follow on uh, Instagram. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Like our video. Feel free to follow me on my personal Instagram, Mike Welds. And uh, if you like the outdoors, you like going mudding, off-roading, things like that, give my uh, riding group a follow on Instagram as well. It's the Digging Dirty Crew. Uh, and also, if you're in the around surround areas and you need any maintenance, lift kits, lights, audio, anything like that, feel free to shoot me a uh, DM on Instagram. I'll get with you and I'll hook you up with the best prices as possible. Thank you.